All right, welcome to JC Sports Detroit Lions News Podcast. If you didn't see the last podcast, Detroit Lions News Podcast, we did a deep dive into the positional battles that could happen at training camp. Uh, we went through every position, quarterback through special teams. Go check it out on Detroit Lions News Podcast, uh, wherever you get your podcasts. So today I wanted to do a video. Obviously, today uh, the ESPN rankings came out for the edge rushers. And I, I admit to a fault, I was a little bit pissed off by the fact that Ali McNeil didn't get the recognition he deserved in the defensive tackle rankings. I understand why they didn't put um, why they didn't put DJ Reader in there. Obviously, he was injured last year, so you really can't put him in there. But when I look when I look at it in a broad spectrum, I went into this article of the top edge rushers, and I was like, they're gonna jip Aiden Hutchinson. Because every article that you've seen so far, they they put Hutch in a very high light. I think Pro Football Focus had him six, I, and and then in this article they had him six as well. I think there was an NFL.com article that had him six as well. So it's not like they're jipping him. Uh, Hutch is getting the rec- recognition he deserves, but I feel like he hasn't even broke his ceiling of what he could be. Now, when this uh, executive or scouting director was quoted, he said, high ceiling, he will be the next Nick Bosa, an NFL scouting director said, banking on him, getting even better, highly disruptive, physical, near rare, near rare mortar. And that's what I wanted to get to. So I think, um, I think Hutch hasn't reached his potential of what he could actually be. I feel like this year with a new defensive line coach in Terrell Williams, who is one hell of a co- one hell of a coach. I seen what he did in uh, Tennessee, and I was like, "Wow, that guy is a legitimate. Uh, he, he's a difference maker." Um, and then you you add in a guy like DJ Reader. So like last year when we were watching the Detroit Lions, you go week one through eight, and you can go back on Game Pass on NFL.com, which used to be NFL Plus, but it's Game Pass now, and you can go watch the coaches' film. Um, you can go watch the coaches' film and kind of go back and like just look at the defense and how the offenses game planned for Hutch and McNeil in particular. And then you saw when McNeil got injured, um, Aaron Glenn pivoted to a more aggressive scheme. I think last in the last couple weeks, weeks eleven through eighteen, they were the highest highest blitzing team in the NFL. One of the highest blitzing teams in the NFL because they had to. But if you go week through week one through eight, you get a good sample size on what teams are doing to Ali McNeil and Aiden Hutchinson. I thought they were kind of hampered by the the lack of help on the other side. Like Ali McNeil would go to the other side to kind of divvy it out, but it's still they were keying in on those two guys, and they would leave guys like Kaminsky one on one or name your name your guy on the opposite side that you know they left one on one. You know. The defensive tackles. I mean, Levi Enrique didn't do much. You know, there was a lot of a lot of things that were not right, and that's why when they went to the trade deadline, I was like, they need to get a defensive tackle or edge rusher. And obviously, Smanta Sweat went to Chicago. There wasn't really a defensive tackle really getting traded, so they were kind of in limbo. And we saw when McNeil came back that they were they were a, the same aggressive team that they were when Aleem left. And it, you could start to see a little bit of a difference in the defense. And I, I just I just have to say this. I think we have, like I said earlier, I said, I don't think we have seen the best of Aiden Hutchinson. I kind of feel like he's due for a breakout nationally. We know how good Aiden Hutchinson can be in Detroit. We know how good he can be. He's he's a lot, he's one of the best players. You know, he he really transforms the defense. Um, what would this defense be without in Hutchinson the last couple of years? Probably pretty bad. He's been one of the best players, and obviously it shows when these executives, they rank Hutchinson six. That's top 10 in the league. You have a top 10 rush pass rusher. So when I when I listen to you know people nationally, they're like, he's going to get better. He's going to get better. Well, this is the time he's going to get better. Because unlike in years past, this defense has more toys to work with. They have a better coach in Terrell Williams. And I can say that confidently because I saw what he did in Tennessee with guys that were supposed to be absolute disasters in terms of edge rushers. 
I mean, he made Harold Landry look good. Harold Landry was ass for two years. They finally made him into, into a decent player, and then he got a big contract somewhere else. That just tells you the kind of coach that Terrell Williams is. And then they add in a guy like DJ Reader to the defense who is going to – he's he's not a guy who's going to rush the passer. So this, this, this notion that, oh, why doesn't he get sacks? DJ Reader's uh, job is not to get sacks. It's to hold blocks. It's to, you know – their teams are gonna have to double team him. They gotta double team him, or he will get sacks. So it frees up a guy like Hutch. It frees up a guy like Aleem. Like someone they can't block, they can't double block everybody on that line. They they can't. They can't. So it's gonna leave a guy like Marcus Davenport if he's healthy. Boom. James Houston. Boom. Josh Pascal. They're gonna have a one-on-one shot. And that's what I think is gonna really push Hutch to the next level. You know, a lot of times. In recency, you know, I thought when I when you watch Hutch, I think a lot of his sacks are because he just doesn't quit. Like a lot of his sacks are because he just doesn't effing quit. So when when you don't quit, you're gonna get sacks. Unfortunately for Hutch, he would have more sacks if he was getting help from his, the rest of his defensive line. And last year, Lee McNeil had a great year, but they literally keyed in uh, keyed in on those two players, and they kind of made it to where. The other side was going to have to beat him. And then they put Lee McNeil on the other side a couple games, and it didn't work out as well. So they moved him back uh, towards Hutch, and they would do some they do some things. They put Kaminsky on, on uh, Hutch's side a couple times, and that didn't work out because there would be a double-team rate to Hutch and then a double-team rate to Lee McNeil. And then the center was on Kaminsky, and it's kind of a mismatched advantage. Or um, I think Levi Enrique was one of them too. I think he got blown up last year, but... I, I think the defense is better. I think it helps out Hutch. I think it helps out Aline McNeil to have a guy like DJ Reader on their side. It helps to have a, a defensive line coach who is going to develop some of these defensive ends that you have on the roster. We know that Marcus Davenport can be a really great player when he's healthy. If he stays healthy, you're going to get another year of James Houston to help you out. He's a he's your pass rusher. You got to hope that Josh Pascal kind of takes the next step. And at the very least, if DJ Reader holds serve and he's healthy and Ali McNeil plays like he did last year and Hutch plays like he did this last this last year, you could be looking at a potential defensive player of the year in Aiden Hutch. I, I, I fully guarantee you that. Because when you think about it, what Reader's going to do is he's going to take double teams away from Hutch or Aline. I mean, obviously, Hutch is still going to get double teamed, but someone's going to break free. And eventually, they can't double everyone. So someone is going to be one-on-one. And I like Hutch's chances. The way that he um, the way that he works to get the sack, like, there was a lot of sacks. I think there was, like, four or five sacks. I remember watching the game film that he got strictly on hard work alone. Like, there was four or five sacks I could specifically count where he – literally got it because he was working harder than the other guy working harder than the guy that were double blocking him like Hutch has played very very good I feel like the players around him are much better I feel like Aaron Glenn has a much better grasp on the defense on what to do to get pressure and I feel like the best is for is coming for Aiden Hutchinson I, I truly do I think Aiden Hutchinson is is due for a breakout year nationally I think being being a breakout guy in Detroit and being a breakout guy in the national scheme is quite different. Obviously, you know people are giving Jameer Gibbs his flowers and St. Brown his flowers, and but I think Hutch deserves his flowers, and I think he's going to earn it this year. I wouldn't be shocked if he gets sixteen plus sacks. I'll just put that out there. I don't, I would not be shocked if Hutch gets sixteen plus sacks. I think the defense is better. Aaron Glenn knows how to. You know, get pressure better than he ever has because he last year at the later half of the year he was doing really really well with the blitzing and getting pressure on the quarterback. I don't think that's going to change. I think that was something that Aaron Glenn kind of adopted because of how good some of the safeties were, and now he's going to use that and they're going to totally deploy this defense. And I could see this defense being a top ten defense if Hutch breaks out into another stratosphere. I'm Joe Chapp with JC Sports. I'll see you in the next video. As I said, go listen to Detroit Lions News Podcast. 
and uh, Red Alert Podcast. Those are two spot podcasts. But if you're a Michigan, Michigan State, Tigers, Red Wings, Pistons, all your videos will be right here. So stay tuned to that, and we'll see you in the next